angels cry holy holy is the lord the angels cry holy Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. you this evening as we gather together for this watch night service, as we come together as this family of faith here at St. Columbanus Church. And so I say to you, Happy New Year's. As we stand on this brink of a brand new year, as we come to the end of 2020, as we look forward to all of the blessings that God has in store for all of us in this brand new year. And so we recognize that as a community of faith, as a people of faith, it's good for us to be here in the house of the Lord, to recognize that we are connected wherever we find ourselves on this night, to this place, to this sacred community, to this God who promises to do great things for each of us. I recognize that 2020 has been quite the year for all of us, for our whole entire world, that there is so much that all of us are carrying with us in this moment as we gather together to be reminded of what's happened this past year, to be open to everything that God has in store for us. But what we know as we gather for our worship this evening is that God is able. Amen. That God is able to do great things for us, that God is able to bring us 
this great gift of healing and wholeness that we need, that God is the one who is able to make all things new. And so I want us to remember that as we gather for this watch night service, that as we come together as a community in this moment of prayer, we come relying on the blessings from God, recognizing that God is truly abundant in the ways that he blesses us. And so as we just sang, we are surrounded by the angels in this place, and we recognize that as we come for worship, God is still worthy to be praised. That even with the things that have been hard and challenging and difficult, even with the grief and the sadness and the trauma, even with the, the stuff and the messiness that we carry with us into our worship tonight, God is still worthy of being praised. Because you and I, we're still here. And as we celebrate this great season of Christmas, God still comes to dwell among us. And so I invite us as we gather together this evening for our service to just take a moment to put ourselves in the presence of the Lord and to begin this service in prayer. And so we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most gracious and loving God, we truly give you thanks and praise this night. We thank you, Lord, for being the one who is able, the one who is able to do all things but fail us. We thank you, Lord, for the many ways that you continue to remind us that you are always with us. We thank you, Lord, and we celebrate the fact that you are the God who promises to always be with us, the God who never abandons, never forsakes, never leaves any of us. We come bearing everything that we've endured this past year, everything that's good and everything that's been challenging, everything that's beautiful and everything that's not so beautiful. We recognize that you are Lord of it all. As we come in this octave of Christmas, we recognize that, that you are the God who desires to come and dwell among us. That as we celebrate this season of Christmas, we celebrate the gift of your love that is enfleshed in us. We thank you for the gift of your love that is alive in our world. And we stand before you on this threshold of a brand new year, trusting in the plans that you have for us. That as we prepare to enter into 2021, we recognize that you are the God who is still in control. Mm. That you're the God who remains an on-time God. Glory. We recognize that you are the rock and the foundation of our lives, the source of all of our blessings. And so we ask you, Lord, to be with us tonight. We ask you, Lord, to unleash your Holy Spirit wherever it is that we find ourselves. We ask you, God, to fill each and every one of us with the gift of your Spirit so that we might be connected to one another, that we might be connected to you. We ask you, Lord, to open our hearts, to open our minds, to open our spirits as we gather for worship. We ask you, Lord, to allow us to bring all of our fears and all of our troubles, all of our hopes and all of the possibilities of our lives into this moment of prayer. We trust that you are the God who will bless us abundantly in this new year. Oftentimes in ways that are truly unexpected. And so we ask you, God, to be with us as we pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Now, it is not necessary for me to write you about the ministry to the saints, for I know your eagerness, which is the subject of my boasting about you to the people of Macedonia. Saying that Achaia has been ready since last year and your zeal has stirred up most of them, but I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you may not prove to have been empty in this case, so that you may be ready as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready, we would be humiliated to say nothing of you in this undertaking. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead to you and arrange in advance for this bountiful gift that you have promised, 
so that it may be ready as a voluntary gift and not as an extortion. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed by sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the need of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgiving to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. good you've been so good Lord you are good you've been better than good I can't praise you enough I owe you my life I can't praise you enough even if I try cause you've been so good, oh, you've been so good, you've been so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are good, you've been so good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. Oh, you've been all through this year so good. by now. It's been by the Lord's grace, by the Lord's mercy that we've made it this far this year. It's not by your might, not by your power, but by the Spirit of God. You're not that good of a driver. You're not that good looking around corners in this dangerous city. It's because the Lord has kept you. Oh, so, so many doors you've opened, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me. You've been better than good to me, 
So many doors you've opened. So many ways you've made. So many times you healed me. You've been better than good to me. So many doors you've opened. So many ways you've made. So many times you healed me. You've been better than good to me. So many doors you've opened. So many ways you've made. So many times you heal me. Oh, you've been better than good to me. 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 Oh, you've been so good. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've spared our lives. You've been, thank you, Lord, so good. Oh, praise you, Lord. You've been so good. Thank you, God. You've been so good to me. That's why we're here tonight, because we recognize that God has been so good to us. There's one of the lines that Kevin just saying that he's been better than good. Hopefully, that's how you feel as uh, we gather together for this watch night service as we come in prayer on this New Year's Eve. Now, look, I recognize that our celebration of New Year's Eve this year is probably different for a whole lot of us. I mean, there's probably some of us who are used to being at home at this time, uh, watching something on TV as in preparation for the celebration of the new year. But for many of us, New Year's Eve is an opportunity to be gathered with family and friends, to really welcome in, to celebrate, to party a little maybe, uh, as we begin this new year. But we recognize that things are different as we come to the end of 2020. I think if we think back to where we were a year ago, when we gathered together for our watch night service last year, this isn't probably how we expected this year to end. I remember standing right here in our parish, preaching about how this new year was a new opportunity, a new opportunity for all of us to receive the gift of God's blessings in our lives. We're, we were excited because not only was it a new year, we were ushering in a brand new decade. And we recognize that, that this decade was going to be filled with things yet to be seen. That there was so much excitement for us as a parish, as a people, as we gathered for our watch night celebration, as we came on that New Year's Day to celebrate the gift of a brand new year. And yet, so much has happened this past year. For all of us, we have faced challenges that were definitely unprecedented. Our country has seen some tensions that many would have liked to have believed no longer exist. There's many families who are mourning the loss of loved ones. The first New Year's Eve, without a husband, a wife, a son, or a daughter, or family members, or friends. We recognize that as we come to the end of this year, we, as the human family, are carrying so much grief and sadness and so many burdens with us. And yet there's still this sense of excitement for us as we look to everything that's promised in a new year. I think that's the thing for us as we gather for this celebration is that, that every year we come together on New Year's Eve, every year that we gather together for our watch night service, it's an opportunity for us to remember that God is the one who makes all things new that God allows us to move through these different times and seasons in our lives, always bringing us through the things that feel like the, the greatest of storms. 
we recognize that the challenges that we face this year, while they might be different, some of them aren't so new. There's some of us who come every year to this moment, standing on the threshold of a brand new year, looking to become new, looking for God to do something new. That for some of us, we gather year after year in this moment, filled with all sorts of resolutions and all sorts of hopes about, about who we will become in this new year. And then life happens, and challenges and difficulties come our way, and we come back to this point, hoping again that God will do something new. You know, our focus here at St. Columbanus over the last several months has been on radical hospitality. That as we thought about everything that we've had to endure together in this year, we've recognized as a parish how important it is for us to be a community of radical hospitality. We've made a commitment together as a parish to ensure that we are a place that welcomes everyone who passes through our doors. That we become a community that, that truly accepts one another for who we are, who sees the potential in one another, who doesn't judge each other based on our past, but instead sees the possibilities for our futures. Our sermon series, our Bible studies, our formation videos, our blog posts, our conversations together over these last months have focused our attention on this, on this need for us to be a people of radical hospitality. And as we come to the end of this year, we don't come to just check off the box that we've completed this sermon series or this time of formation in our parish. Instead, what I'm inviting us to think about tonight is the fact that living radical hospitality is the very foundation for our life as disciples of Jesus. That everything about who we are as followers of Jesus is about living this mission of radical hospitality in our world. And for us, as church folk, we start that right here in our own parish. It happens right here in this sanctuary, in these pews, on this sacred ground. What it means is that when we come into this place, we are called to bring our whole self before God. The foundation of our life of radical hospitality is about remembering that, that God is the one who always accepts us for who we are. That God loves us as we are. That even with all of the mess of this past year, even with those places in our lives where we think we fell short, even with those resolutions that we let go of way back in January, God's love for you and me is still real. We had to learn in a very hard way in March and April and May when the doors of our church had to remain closed. That our life of faith and our life of discipleship is never about simply coming to church. But instead, what we've learned together over this past year, I hope in a very powerful way, is that our mission is to be church wherever it is that we find ourselves in this world. That's why you and I are called to live this, this gift, this mission, this ministry of radical hospitality. Because what happens is every time we gather before God in worship, we are reminded of this unconditional, everlasting, eternal love that God wishes to share in our lives. That even with all of our brokenness, every time we enter into this sacred place, we are reminded that we are God's beloved sons and daughters. That we are the ones whom God loves very deeply. That like Jesus, our mission and our ministry becomes to, to be that same person in our world. To share that same gift of love with the people you and I encounter on a daily basis. To make sure that in all of the spaces that we find ourselves in, we are living radical hospitality. That we're accepting people for who they are. That we are loving people unconditionally in spite of the things that have happened in their past. That we see the possibilities and the potential in one another. And after the year that we've had together, 
here in Chicago, here in our country, here in our world, here in this moment, we need to be the people who live radical hospitality because we recognize that there are so many people tonight who are truly hurting. So we gather for this moment of worship to remember. To remember every good thing that God has done for us this past year. We gather to remember and to celebrate and to say thank you to our God for everything that God has brought us through. We come to praise God in this moment because we recognize that God is the one who is able to do great things in our lives. That as we stand together on this threshold of a brand new year, as we stand together with all of our hopes and all of our excitement and all of our joys and all of the promise of what this new year holds for us, we are called tonight to remember that God is able. That God is the one who's able to make all things new. That God is the, is the one who is able to show up in our lives in this very moment to remind us just how loved we are. That God is able to take everything that we've been through over this past year and turn it into a blessing for our future stories. Look, I think that all of us in the years to come, especially after we get through this time of pandemic, we're going to be looking back at the year 2020 and we're going to be telling our kids and our grandkids and our great-grandkids about everything that we had to endure in this year. And hopefully, part of that story is to tell the ways that God has shown up. How God's given us the strength in the moments that, that we thought we weren't able to keep going, that God showed up in our lives to give us that gift of strength. That God showed up in our lives to remind us that with the gift of God's Spirit, you and I are able to do the impossible. Because God's the one who continues to do the impossible for each of us. You know, tonight we heard this, this beautiful reading from the ninth chapter of St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We heard the entire ninth chapter that's read. One of the verses in there is one that you often hear me say here at Mass, that God loves a cheerful giver. The sermon isn't about us becoming more cheerful in our giving, although it would be appreciated if that was something you were able to do. But what we recognize in this reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians is that Paul was writing to this church of Corinth, who he believed were these great supporters in his ministry, to proclaim and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in our world. That Paul was speaking to a church community who believed in the message of the gospel. Paul refers to them as talking about their support of the saints in Jerusalem. That Paul was preparing this community of faith for his arrival there when he would ask them to continue to give their support, their financial support, for the ministry that he was doing. But we hear this line around verse 6, that those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly, but those who sow abundantly will reap abundantly. I mean, I think that's a great image for us as we prepare to enter into this brand new year, that you and I are called to be the ones who sow, who plant seeds into our future, who recognize that, that when we are sparing in what we do, we're in fact holding back a part of ourselves from God. I think that's always the great challenge for us in our spiritual life, to be, a, a, to be allowed to be drawn into this great mystery that allows us to be reminded that it's, it's when we give everything away that we actually find everything that we're looking for. It's, it's when you and I are willing to be abundant in what we sow that you and I will reap a harvest abundantly. And then St. Paul writes there in that letter, in verse 8, And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that you may always have enough of everything and may provide in abundance for every good work. 
And God is able to provide you with every blessing. Friends, that's the way I want us to begin this new year with one another. I want us, as we start this new year, as we begin this new chapter, this new moment in our story, to be reminded that God is able to be abundant in the ways that God blesses us. That God wants to be abundant in blessing our lives. That God wants to, to continue to show up in our lives and provide us with everything it is that we need. But the thing is, as we hear St. Paul say to that church of Corinth, you and I have to be willing to make up our minds. That's this thing about discipleship. There's always a point of decision for each of us. There's a moment when we have to make up our own minds as to whether or not we're going to sow sparingly or sow abundantly. Whether or not we're going to hold back part of ourselves from God or whether we'll surrender everything about who we are over to God. I think what 2020 has taught us is that our plans almost always fall apart. That no matter how much we plan and how much we prepare, no matter how much we look towards the future with great hopes for the things that could be, God's plans are always greater. In the moment, it's not always so easy for us to see that. But I think that's the beauty of moments like this. That when we gather together in worship, in prayer, as a community of faith, we can be reminded how good God is. We can be reminded of, of all of the ways that God continues to show up. We can be reminded of the ways that, that God has already been abundantly blessing us. And then we can be filled with this faith, this hope, this trust that allows us to believe that if God's done it in our past, he'll do it again. You see, that's the thing about this God who is able. This God who is able is the one who's able to, to heal us. This God who is able is, is the one who's able to make a way out of no way. This God who is able is the one who's able to show up in our lives each and every moment. That this God who is able is the one who's able to call us as we are in this moment to do something great with our lives. Cardinal Supic said at his midnight mass just a few days ago, that the story of the shepherds is the story of the one who shows up to those who are living on the edge. That's always our mission, to be the ones who show up in our world, to tell those who are living on the edge that there is a God who is able, a God who is able to love them unconditionally, a God who is able to bless them abundantly. A God who is able to be with them even until the end of time. That's why we come together as this community of faith. So that we can be reminded for ourselves in this moment that God hasn't abandoned us. That God, in this season of Christmas, is truly the one who comes to dwell among us, that in this moment, we can give our whole selves over to God. I hope that can be our resolution as individuals and as a parish, that we don't hold back any part of ourselves in this new year. Everything about 2021 is hidden from us in this moment. But what we can know and what we can believe is that God will be with us in every moment. But we have to make up our minds. Whether or not we're going to keep living the way we've been living or whether we'll allow God to do something new in us. Whether or not we'll continue to hold back a part of ourselves because we think that God won't love us, the people around us won't love us, that we are not worthy to bring that to God. Or we can choose 
in this moment to walk even closer with the Lord. I think that's another thing we've learned in 2020, is that we need God. We aren't strong enough. We don't have all the answers. There are challenges that are greater than the things that you and I can even think of. But how good it is to know that God always shows up. So friends, on this New Year's Eve, be reminded that God is able. Whatever it is that you've carried with you to this moment, trust that God is able to take that from you in this moment and turn it into a blessing for your life. That all of the stuff that has been hard and challenging and messy and, and caused all sorts of emotions in your life, God is able to take all of that on in this moment to give you this great blessing of being free, of being able to enter into this new year unburdened by any of the stuff that we've had to carry to this point. But we have to make the choice to let it go, to lay it down, to truly trust that God is able. And then a year from now, when we gather back together for our watch night service again, we can celebrate all of the great things that God has done for us throughout the course of this year. Every year that we gather in this moment, we stand in great anticipation for everything that God will do. So don't let 2020 be the thing that defines your life. Let this be the moment that you abandon everything to be open to everything that God is calling you to. Because if you do, the blessings you receive this year will truly be abundant. Praise God for that powerful word reminding us. Now unto him who is able to keep us, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Exceedingly, abundantly, Above all, you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. you. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. So don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. Just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. So don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. Yes, he is. You got to believe that, that he's able. That he's able. I know he is. I've tried him and I know him. He's able. Do you have the faith? Oh, he's able. That's the part where you sing. 
it one more time. You can get it. Oh. Because he won't give up on you. Because he's able. What a powerful song. He's able. He's able. So at this stage of our service, this midnight... Uh, like watch night service. I like to reflect with you a little bit on a scripture that, that I think you can hang on to because this Bible is all full of the promises of God. Okay? We serve a God of promise. And what God does is God fulfills his promise. One of his promises is that what? He is what? Able. So say that to yourself. He's able. He's able. He's able. Okay. So this text I'd like to share with you is from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 15 through to 19, Isaiah 43. Now it's a very, very powerful text. Listen to it. It says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Then verse 18 says, Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago, consider not. Verse 19, See, I'm doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert, I make a way. In the wasteland, rivers. Now this is a God who is able. And that's what he's declaring. He says what? Remember not the events of the past. 
The things of long ago consider not. Now when Israel was hearing this prophecy, remember it's Isaiah 43. Hmm? It's what we call the second part of the prophecy of Isaiah. Many, many a time it's called second Isaiah or deutero Isaiah, right? It's believed that the prophecy of Isaiah is in three parts. There's proto Isaiah, the first Isaiah, second Isaiah, and third Isaiah. Now as Isaiah is prophesying, the people of Israel are in exile. In Babylon. Did you hear that? They are in exile. They've been humiliated. They've been shamed. The temple has been destroyed. Jerusalem has been raised down. The people have been sent into captivity. Can I tell you how many years they were in Babylon? 70 years. Did you hear that? I mean, we're going through coronavirus for one year. And we're crying. They were in exile for 70 years. So in 2nd Isaiah or Deuter Isaiah, God is beginning to comfort them and assure them of restoration. Right? They've been beaten down. They've been humiliated. They've been shamed. Why did this happen? Because of their sin. It was sin that led them into captivity. But what does God do? God said, I'm going to restore you. Now, if I'm going to restore you, I'm going to give you a little bit of history. And God begins to recount the occasion when he made what? Israel walked through dry ground. Do you remember the Red Sea? That's what he says. He gives them that history. And what he says is, even that wonder that I performed, he says, remember not the events of the past. The things of long ago, consider not. And he says what? See, I'm doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Friends, when we say God is able, it means God is in the business always of doing something what? New. Even when we cannot perceive it. So you know what? As we enter into this new year 2021, I think the message is simple. As I was praying and preparing this, as Father told me, I just felt like the Lord was saying, it's not going to be business as usual. Ma, ma, ma. Did you hear me? It's not going to be business as usual. And this is what the Lord is saying. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago. Consider not. See, I am doing a new thing. Can you not perceive it? So it's for those who have eyes to see that God what? Reveals what? Himself to. Okay. So what are we going to do? Let's Part B here is response. How are we going to respond to this God who tells us that he's doing a new thing? That's why I brought two trash cans here. Can you see them? Two trash cans. And there's a story told of a young boy, right, who was learning how to pray the Our Father. You all know the Lord's Prayer, right? And when he learned it, you know the part that says, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. He heard it like they were saying, forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those who throw trash into our baskets. Did you, did you hear what I said? Now, it might be funny, like the, the little boy was, was, was praying the prayer wrongly, but it's something very powerful because... At this stage of our prayer, this is what we're going to do. I want us to go through a ritual action, right? I want you to pick a piece of paper. It could be as big as this, or it could be, what do you call this, post-it? Or, or it could be as small as a post-it. You call it post-it, right? Yeah. It could be as small as a post-it, or as big as, is this A4? It, yeah, A4 or post-it, whatever size it is, okay? The, the first part is simple. The first part, we like Israel, you and I, okay? We have to acknowledge where we have sinned. Do, do you know what it means to sin? That means we have done it not God's way, like Israel did. It was their sin that led them to be conquered by the Babylonians and taken into exile, okay? So on this sheet, either the small one or the big one, I want you to write one or two things that you want to confess, you, you know it in your heart. Let nobody see it. You know why I brought two trash baskets here? 
don't put it in the recycle basket. Right? Not recycle. Because some of us, we go back and we recycle the things. No. Put it in the trash where you don't go back and pick things up. Okay? So, write down one or two things. Maybe, oh Lord, I'm so sorry that I fornicated. I'm so sorry that I committed adultery. I'm so sorry that I stole. Whatever it is that you know clearly in your heart, God has convicted you that you have done wrong. I'm going to write mine. Okay? And then what you do is, when you have done that, right? It says, forget not the things of the past. Eh? For, forget, remember not the events of the past. So, fold it nicely. Okay? As you're sitting there in your house, everybody, pick a sheet of paper and do yours. When you have written on it, simply you lay it down first. So that's the first part. The second part has something to do with uh, you remember the little boy forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those who throw trash into our baskets. I know this year some people have thrown trash into your baskets. You, you hear what I'm saying? This is not what you are responsible for. But what others have done to you. Maybe somebody has hurt you big time. And you are mad. Can I tell you something? You have no control over how somebody behaves. The only person you have control over is you. How you react to what they've done to you. Okay? So if you are hurting, you write it down. Say, God, <laughs> I'm not going to take over what does the scripture say? Vengeance belongs to the Lord. So I'm not, going to, I'm not going to react. I'm not going to retaliate. I want you to deal with that person according to your mercy. But at least acknowledge that you are hurting. Okay? So if it be on that small sheet of paper, maybe, maybe your husband cheated on you. You're hearing what I'm saying? And you found out. Uh, maybe your, your wife cheated on you and you found out. Maybe you got fired by your boss and you are so mad. Probably you've been disappointed in the ways that your children have been, what, disrespectful to you. What have you? Take that sheet of paper. Say, I'm hurting in this area. You remember that? So the first one is the things we have done against God. We are sorry. We write it down. Trash. Okay? Second is what others have done to us. Okay? So as you go through this, you write it. Pretty soon, Uncle Kevin is going to be playing a song and gently, you quietly go through that experience. Don't let anybody see your sheet. Mind you, don't try and... It's none of your business. Okay? It's between the person and God. Okay? And then finally, the third part we're going to do, in that prayer of our Father, what do we say? Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Brothers and sisters, what we're going to pray is that God's reign, you understand what it means to speak about God's kingdom? That God's kingdom will reign and rule over this world. But you and I know that when God's reign is coming upon us, sometimes you and I resist. We resist God's kingdom, God's reign. And so, this is going to be the part that you and I are going to make our resolution. Okay? Father spoke a little bit about, about surrender. Which part of you are you going to give to God? Everything or just that little part? Remember St. Augustine? Great saint from Africa. What did he say? He had a struggle with chastity, right? In the area of his sexuality, he was struggling. He said he would always pray, Lord, make me more chaste but not yet. See, until the time that he surrendered and said, Basta, enough. I'm going to give everything to God. He was still held in bondage. Okay? So, let's surrender to God. Maybe you're going to tell him, Lord, I surrender my leisure moments. Okay? Remember those leisure moments? Those times that sometimes you don't know what to do. But what do you do? You just use that time in doing whatever you want. That doesn't please God. 
Lord, maybe that's what I want to surrender. Probably it's your sexuality. Right? Maybe you said, it's mine. I choose to do with my body what I want, how I want, with whomever. No. That's what you want to surrender to the Lord. That's how his reign, that's how God's kingdom has to be manifested. So tell the Lord, I surrender. Maybe it's an addiction. You are enslaved by this addiction. It's in control of you. It's destroying you. You're bound. What does the team say? God is able. He's able to set you free from that addiction to pornography. He's able to set you free from whatever. His kingdom come. His will be done. It's not a time to feel shame. It's not a time to feel condemned. You see, God is not surprised at our sins. Because he knows our frailty. He knows our weakness. You know what takes God off? Our rationalization. When we begin to make excuses and rationalize. Well, you know, it's not my fault. It's all because of this. No, 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 no. When you open up, he takes over. His kingdom will take over. So remember, what we are going to put is not in the recycle bin, but in the what? Trash bin. Because the little boy says what? Forgive us huh? our what? Trash baskets. As we forgive those who throw trash into our baskets. So, so Kevin is going to give us, you know, some meditative songs eh, as we do this together. If I'm going to take out a pen and I'm going to start writing mine. So let's do that now in your family, in the comfort of your living room. Do not be afraid. God is there with you. Let's go, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for calling us to something greater, to something deeper. Thank you for assuring us in that promise that you are able. And we thank you, Lord, that in this new year, 2021, it's not going to be business as usual. But we're going to be about your business. Just like you got lost, Jesus, at the age of 12 and your parents found you in the temple and they were worried and you told them did you not know that I must be about my father's business Lord this is how we want to see your kingdom come this is how we want to see your reign established here thank you for being a faithful God we've had a taste of something out of this world in 2020 Lord COVID has affected every aspect of our lives but thank you for the changes that it's brought. 
It's made us aware that, Lord, our life is fragile. That we are not in control. But that you are in control. This is, this is nothing out of your control. And so we want to be about your business. Whether we are alive or dead. <laughs> whether we are on this side of glory or you've called us to be with you. Lord, stir up a new sense of faith in us. We don't want to be a people who live in fear. Fill our hearts with faith so that as we surrender, we know you are able to take away our sins. We know you're able to heal us of the hurts that people have hurt us. But we know also that because you are able, your kingdom will come and your will will be done. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Okay, if you like, eh? Whatever you've put in the trash, okay? If you can take it outside and burn it, that would be nice. But we don't want to call the fire department, okay? So you just tie up that trash, throw it away. God bless you and Happy New Year. And so friends, I thank you for joining us for this watch night service. Thank you for spending a part of your New Year's Eve with us here at St. Columbanus. Just know that all of us will be praying for you and for your families as we begin this new year with one another. I want to thank uh, Kim and Mark, Kevin, Demond, and Jennifer for being with me this evening, for helping us lead uh, this worship, especially to Jennifer for all the technical pieces to make tonight possible. It's a great staff, a great team that we have here at St. Columbanus. It's definitely a blessing for me to be able to minister with them and to be here tonight with them. And so as Dr. Nemo just prayed that beautiful prayer, I just want to invite us to receive our blessing this evening, to just bow your heads in prayer for a moment. Gracious and loving God, we truly give you thanks and praise. We thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings of this past year, and we thank you, God, right now for everything you promised for us in 2021. We thank you, Lord, for the ways that you will show up in our lives. We thank you for the ways that you will make a way for each of us. We thank you, Lord, for tonight reminding us that you are the God who is truly able. And so we ask you, Lord, to fill all of us with the gift and the grace of your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the strength and the courage that we need to give our whole selves over to you. We ask you, God, to be abundant in the ways that you bless us. We ask you, Lord, to be with us as we make up our minds in this moment to always follow you, to surrender everything about us over to you. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've brought us through this past year. And we thank you, God, for everything that you have planned for us in this new year. Amen. And so we ask you, Lord, to bless us in this moment as we pray together through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And again, Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Jesus. Now, since we know the Lord is able and we know that we've been forgiven, we can sing this the best is yet to come. The best, the best is yet to come. The best, the best is yet to come. The best, the best is yet to come. Today is the first day of the best days of your life. Today is the first day of the best days of your life. Today is the first day of the best days of your life. The best is yet to come. The best, the best is yet to come. Now listen now. You ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing Hey!
Yeah.